Great. Welcome everybody to our 2020 financials first half. Welcome everyone who are joining us. I'm going to wait a little bit so that we can um, allow everyone to come in. The goal of this webinar is to inform you of how we did in the first six months of the financial year and answer your questions. So I look forward to having that opportunity. I'm Howard Marks. I'm the CEO of Start Engine and co-founder. And our mission here, as you'll see, as I'll go through the slides, I'll talk about our mission, our values, and a lot of the things we talk about when we bring in new people to join Start Engine. And we, we, we share this with our community because we believe it, it will help everybody understand better um, our company. Okay, well, let me get started. Again, welcome everybody. <clears throat> this is a disclaimer. Um, this is a legal disclaimer um, explaining that this information here um, is part of our offering document that we filed with the SEC. So you can see it. Um, I'll give you a minute just to read it. I know it's a lot of information, but it's, it's, it's good stuff. Okay. Company updates. This is the agenda today. We'll talk about the mission, our core target values, our financials, the trends, and then uh, 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 really enough time for everybody to answer their, to ask their questions. And now, if you want to ask a question, it's very simple. There's a Q and A button that you, if you move your mouse around, you'll see the thing appear. You can click on it, type in, and Max, who is our moderator, will be taking those questions and presenting them so that I can uh, pick those questions and answer them. Uh, there may be some questions that are repeats. We'll try our best to sort through so we can answer all of the individual um, you know, unique questions. Okay, there we have it. Let's get started. Mission, so our mission here at Start Engine is to help entrepreneurs to achieve their dreams. Our core target, and that's an aspiration goal, is by 2029 to raise $10 billion for our companies. Start Engine values, we use those values with everyone who joins Start Engine. The first value is own the mission, and that's the one I just described to help entrepreneurs achieve their dreams, exceed expectations, be a team player, stay curious, do the right thing, and care about others. These six values, what we do is we ask everyone to live those values most of the time. And when we do our quarterly reviews with our team, we say, okay, so here's how I see you're living the values. And then you tell me how you see it. And we discuss the gap. Where is the gap? And that helps us uh, bring people really exactly towards our, our, our value system, which is really our culture. And we believe is critical to our success. So I'm going to go through the financial review. Um, and that was filed, by the way, with the SEC. And there's a system called Edgar, and we filed that uh, about a week ago. It starts January 1st, ends end of June. That's our first six months of the year. In the first six months of 2020, we generated more revenue than we did in all of 2019. So that's an exciting development. We're very happy about it. We're very proud of the team who worked 24 seven to get this, re these results. Um, as we all know, there was a pan there's a pandemic in the middle of the whole thing and, and certainly can address that. Um, but it's really, really, we're, we're very happy uh, with those results. So in terms of revenue, so in the first six months of 2020, we generated uh, almost five and a half million dollars of revenue. That's an increase of three and a half million over what we did um, in the previous year of 2019. So um, a year over year increase of 188%. I mean, it's basically um, almost doubling what we did last year in the first six months. Um, so why did we have more revenue? Uh, first, 
our regulation crowdfunding. Uh, that's the $1 million uh, raise for companies. We did 2.7 million in 2020 versus 900,000 2019. So that's a pretty significant increase of a million eight. The second thing is uh, the posting fees, commissions, that's what we earn that are not fees from raising the money, but there are fees for providing services, uh, 980,000 versus 83,000. So that's a, a tremendous increase as well. And premium is the, the fees we charge our customers um, when they join the platform uh, to raise money. It's usually $10,000. And what we got 1.1 million versus 495,000 into 2019. So as you can see on our regulation crowdfunding uh, and our regulation A, which are the, 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 the fees on the second uh, line, uh, increased tremendously. So all of this was the result of why the revenue was higher. In terms of the cost of revenue, um, it was one and a half million which is higher obviously our, our, our it has to be higher because our revenue went up and this is these are the variable costs um, but it went up a lot less than proportionally than last year so that means that we were able to improve our gross margins so what does it mean is that in 2020 our gross margins were 72 percent compared to 52 percent it's a, a tremendous increase in cost margin. That means that every dollar we, we, we receive in revenue, uh, you know, basically 72 cents goes to um, our ex, um, basically gross margin, uh, gross profit, some people call it, as, as opposed to half when it was last year. Um, that means um, higher potential profitability down the road once we become profitable because better margins means better results, obviously. Uh, and as we are able to increase our top line, our, our gross margin will, uh, pro our profit margin will increase. So main thing that made the change for this gross margin increase was the regulation A. That's the $50 million rule, a title four of the Jobs Act. And that is the reason you have, we have better margins with regulation a then regulation crowdfunding is that with regulation a per uh, the rules that we have to follow the the credit card fees are not included um, in our revenue uh, at all so what's in our revenue for regulation a is our fees that we charge and also the the equity that we get as part of the offering process and with regulation crowdfunding we are able to add those credit card fees to, to the top line um, as well. So, so there, that is the significant difference. Now, obviously we have also been able to cut down some costs and, 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 and down the road, our goal is always to improve our margins. So we will look at everything we spend and we'll take a, 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 an approach to, to try to improve that by better negotiations with our third party vendors or um, uh, improvements anywhere we can. Operating expenses. So once you have the gross margin, now below that are the operating expenses. Uh, it was 4.2 million. It's an increase of 1.3 million for the same period. That increase is basically we hired more sales and marketing people and we spent more marketing dollars. As you probably know, uh, we were fortunate to sign a deal with Kevin O'Leary, Mr. Wonderful from the Shark Tank show to become a spokesperson and shareholder and advisor. And um, th that costs money as you, as, you, as you know, and that was included in some of the, those expenses were included in that uh, increase. Uh, plus, you know, sales and marketing, we, we, we started the year with a goal to, to improve our sales and you see the results. Well, we had to hire some people to help do that. So increased payroll, bonus expense. Bonus expense is um, sales team. The way our sales team works is that we call them pods. Each pod is a pod manager, 
Um, it's a vice president of the company. And then you have below that uh, three main people, the, the uh, account executive that is doing the sales, um, finding, um, finding new customers, signing new customers. The second person is the uh, account manager, also called onboarding council, and they handle all of the paperwork, a uh, lot of paperwork uh, to follow, to make sure that the, the company um, um, is in compliance with all the rules. So there's a lot of work there involved. And the third person is the uh, uh, crowdfunding strategist um, who is going to be in charge of putting the marketing plan. And below them, there are other people too um, uh, in, in a pod. So the way it works is each pod has revenue and each pod will receive what we call the bonus pool. And the bonus pool is divided among people uh, based on their roles. And that's how it works. So we had uh, 790,000 um, in, in due to that increased headcount and those bonuses. Higher consulting expenses, that's mainly the uh, Kevin O'Leary, as you know, became our spokesperson, advisor, shareholder, very exciting. Um, and he's also appearing on the TV commercials that we have on the different networks, uh, CNBC, CNN, Fox News, uh, among others. And then an increase in stock-based compensation costs. Um, so that's the stock options that we award to our team. Uh, we want our team to feel completely vested in our company, that they have equity. Those are the stock options. So there's an expense associated with that as well. That is not a cash expense, by the way, uh, but we have to recognize it as an expense. Uh, liquidity and capital resources. So the cash used in the first six months was about 700,000 compared to 1.7 million in the same period. So we used a lot less cash. And it's mainly because we, we had more revenue and higher gross margins. And even though we had higher expenses, uh, the difference of the higher revenue, better gross margins really reduced our, 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 our cash use. Um, our net loss during the first six months was 390,000 compared to almost 2 million in the same period. So we've reduced significantly our loss, our, our use of cash as well. Um, and then we also raised some money. So cash provided uh, for the financing activities, but that's our own campaign, which many of you have participated was $6 million for the six months. Uh, compared to about a million one the same period of last year. So we've, as you can see, we've increased a lot of our cash. Um, and if you can see our, our offering document, uh, our own campaign is still live for a few more days. And that has raised significant amount of money as well. A lot of it has been raised since uh, basically July 1st, which doesn't count in any of those numbers. Trends. So um, trend, start engine primary. Start engine primary is basically our broker dealer and that is uh, uh, regulation A. That's our start engine primary. It's a wholly owned subsidiary of our company. Start engine primary LC is the wholly owned subsidiary. Um, we, we had approval actually last year around June. Um, so we've been over a year now as a broker dealer and uh, with the broker dealer, we have some costs and you can imagine those costs are uh, related to uh, a broker dealer activity. And there's a lot of legal compliance costs, uh, people who are associated with the broker dealer costs. Um, however, our revenue has gone up quite significantly for this regulation A business. And you can see most of those campaigns on our page. Uh, think of Nightscope, that raised uh, almost 24 million. Uh, think of, uh, you can see uh, ourselves. Well, we're, we don't count as revenue. So uh, Jet Token and companies like that. You can see that on our, on our, on our website. Um, Start Engine Secondary, that is our goal. We want to launch it in October. We don't know if it's going to happen. We hope it does happen. It's subject to regulatory issues that we have to resolve. 
um, and we're in conversations with the regulators and that is our goal, launch our secondary marketplace. This is gonna also increase costs, but we had has had some of those costs in the first six months because we've been building it. So building it in terms of technology, uh, costs, people has uh, added more costs. Um, however, as we know, once we launch it, we will be able to also generate revenue, hopefully, if everything goes well, right? So uh, we spend about 50,000 a month to make this. So that in the first six months, probably around 300,000, maybe more. I, I would say that is what we think it is, but think about everyone at Start Engine is um, interested and in, involved in some form or fashion in making sure that secondary is launched correctly. That's our technology team, our marketing team, our uh, review team, which is all the, uh, the attorneys uh, to make sure that everything's in compliance. We have also uh, our legal uh, law firm, uh, quite a lot of people. We have uh, uh, some uh, vendors, partners that we work closely with. As some of you may have seen, we've opened the, the, the investment accounts. Some of you have opened investment accounts so we can deposit those start engine shares in it. But all of this um, has been created mostly in the last six months since um, by the end of June, and we continue to create more and more. Now, going to COVID, you know, COVID is not something that we, we predicted. I guess most people didn't. It's not something that we were, we wished on anyone and, and we, we, our hearts go out to people who, who suffered during the COVID. For us, what did it mean? It meant we went virtual. Everyone works from home, even today. Um, we have not used our office space since uh, mid-March. We don't know when uh, we'll be able to use the office space, but the great news is that um, even though we work virtually, everybody's at home, as a team, we've been able to work in a, in a way that has helped the company grow in a way that we never expected. Uh, we have tons of tools. You've heard of Zoom, which is what we're using now for our webinar, but you've heard maybe of Slack. Uh, we have all the Google technologies, Google Docs, Everyone collaborates, works very well together. We're co I'm constantly in, in talking to people over the video with Zoom and Slack all day long. Um, we've been able to hire people using Zoom. We haven't met them yet. We look forward to meeting them in person, but those tools have been incredible. And um, we don't know how long it's gonna continue. I don't think anybody really knows. It has not hurt us so far. It's actually been a great opportunity for us to work really hard and deliver great results. Um, we, we, we hope everything will go back to where we were before in terms of back in the office and so everybody can work together. However, we also understand that this could be quite a lengthy time and, and it's, it's not something that we, we can control. So we want to thank everyone for being part of our community, all of your owners and those who are future owners. Um, I'm going to now uh, take advantage of the time we have left to answer your questions. So I'm going to go and um, bring up uh, the Q&A and then uh, start answering your questions. Okay. All right, so first question, will your secondary market for liquidity be only for start engine platform companies or all startups? It's a great question. So initially, our secondary market is with companies that have raised capital on start engine. Now, the first company, as you may have heard, 
is start engine, right? So what we're gonna do is allow uh, those companies who raise capital on start engine to be on our secondary marketplace. However, we've been getting phone calls from a lot of companies who've raised money also with regulation A uh, on other platforms uh, with our competitors. Uh, that is uh, WeFunder, SeedInvest, Republic, and other platforms who are very interested in having an opportunity to offer their shareholders some liquidity. So we're reviewing that internally and we will be able to uh, figure out a way to make it work. It's not simple because we didn't issue those shares, they were issued by other platforms, but we think there are ways to do it. So I think the answer is yes, um, but the caveat is we, we're not starting with that. That's not our first uh, launch. John R is asking, uh, is Start Engine actively lobbying the SEC to help crowdfunding interests such as Max allowed to raise per year. So mainly the SEC has announced that they're interested in um, the feedback to raise the $1 million rule, the limit to $1 million to $5 million. Um, are we active lobbying? I would say we've had calls with them. Absolutely, we had phone calls with them about it. We've sent letters. In fact, we've had our owners send letters uh, to the SEC. We provided the email address. We asked the, the owners to provide their views. And obviously the FCC receives the letters and reviews those letters. So I think we're doing our fair share about it. Um, and we hope that sometime soon that rule will be um, um, released. Uh, Rajiv says, great to see Kevin O'Leary spreading the word about Start Engine, what kind of uh, KPIs, which is metrics, uh, do you have in place to assess how valuable the partnership is with Kevin? Great question. So we have a lot of metrics at Start Engine. We are, uh, I would say, a metric-driven company. So we look at how much we spend with Kevin on advertising that is online you know, with Facebook, for example, but also on TV like CNBC. And we see the traffic coming into our page and we see what people are doing. So some people are investing in companies, others are uh, interested in having their company uh, join Start Engine. Some invest uh, on, on our own campaign. It's a mix of things. We track all of those numbers and we try to optimize. And what does that mean, optimizing? It means, you know, how to maybe change ads, place, place the ads in different, look, different places, time, different channels. Uh, on Facebook, there's a lot of optimization going on all the time. So the answer is yes, we, we do track it. Um, I can't tell you those numbers that's internal to our company. Um, we don't release those. So uh, Chorten asked a question for international investors like me, will we be able to access secondary platform when it launches? Well, here's how it works. Initially, the answer is no. We plan to allow international investors subject to regulatory review and meeting the, the rules uh, for those international investors. Um, so we decided to start with uh, people who are resident in the United States. Um, that's our first start. Obviously, we're going to make improvement to that. For example, we just started with, um, I would call them the, the ordinary account, single person account, and then soon we'll add more accounts, uh, such as joint accounts, um, individual retirement accounts, trust accounts, all those kinds of accounts are not available on day one, but obviously we'll, we'll, we will be working hard to bring them in. Uh, Jim asks, why charge investor any fees that are not allowed to be applied to the tax cost basis of the purchase? Um, no idea what that means. Um, so here's how we do, we charge. We charge the seller who sells um, on secondary 5%. So the seller pays the 5% fee, not the buyer. The buyer does not pay the fee. I'm not sure if that was your question. Um, 
the basis of the purchase. So when someone pays, let's say $13 for their shares on Start Engine, that's the basis. So if they sell it for, let's say, for right, example, $15, okay, and there's a 5% uh, fee, right, to that, and that, that let's say it's 50, 75 cents. Uh, so 14, 25 is what's left. $13 was the purchase. So there's a dollar plus 25 um, in, in profit, right? Um, so I um, actually it's 14.25. So so there would be roughly a dollar, about roughly a dollar 25. So th that's how it works. Uh, John, credit card transaction fees are really high. Do you see these going down in the future? So we 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 agree that credit card transactions are high. Um, the main explanation we've given is that uh, crowdfunding is still viewed as a risky business. Now, equity crowdfunding is different than crowdfunding. So crowdfunding, think of Kickstarter, equity crowdfunding, think of us. I think the banks and the credit card merge, uh, issuers, the ones who handle uh, putting the classification have not um, figured out where we fit. And I think that's part of the reason why those are high. We believe over time, they're gonna go down. We believe that. And the reason is because the classification may change, but also we may be able to cut better deals with our vendors. So that's the answer. Sam asks, are you going public? That's, a, that's hard to explain because the word going public typically is used in the word IPO, initial public offering, which is going on the NASDAQ, the, stock, the New York Stock Exchange. In our case, going public we're not saying we're going public but what we're saying is the start engine uh, shares that you purchase will be available for trading once once we launch secondary so what does that mean in terms of the nomenclature i i'm not going to say you know regulators are very sensitive to using the word ipo because it's reserved really for a certain reason and not necessary with what we're doing I think over time we're going to settle with nomenclature that works, um, that the regulators feel good about, and then we, we can use to explain what happens when a company uh, ra raises money on Start Engine and then goes on secondary. What is that called? If you guys have any suggestions, please, please type them in uh, into this, uh, in, you, you, uh, in, in under chat, for example. You can put it under chat, suggestions, ideas, things that you, you think could be valuable for us. Question is, what beyond profit and shareholder increase is Start Engine doing to benefit society? Well, you know, I think our mission to help entrepreneurs achieve their dreams does benefit society. And the reason is because you find that uh, small business in America, I mean, there's roughly 5 million, but some people say there, there are 30 million because you count some of the sole practitioners but anyway, there's millions and millions of companies in America. They represent 70% of all the jobs. So it's interesting, big business is not America. Big business is not, does not employ most of the people in our country. Small business does. So if we're able to, with our mission, help more entrepreneurs succeed because they have access to capital, I believe that we are helping society by creating jobs. And job creation in the end of the day, in my belief, is critical for society to function. People have uh, income and dignity from the work they're able to accomplish. And I think that's important. So we at Start Engine, as a group of all the people at Start Engine, we have a mission, we feel very compelled by it, and we believe that we're helping society. One thing I would like to point out is Look at the founders of the companies on Start Engine, and they represent our country. It is not um, just one type of group of people. It's everyone. We have people from many states, even though a lot of them come from California and New York, and we have uh, many. We have we have many people from different backgrounds, and I think that is a great thing. You don't see that as much in the venture capital um, industry, where they 
typically invest in people that look like themselves. Um, but that's not true in equity crowdfunding. That is actually not true. It's different. Equity crowdfunding has a much wider uh, group of people. So that's great. I think that's great to be able to contribute. Um, another question is how does the company compare against the competition? You know, you know, we can always go and say, oh, we're the best, we're the biggest, the strongest. That's not really what we're trying to do. That's not interesting. Um, I think our, comp our competitors don't have to lose for us to win. What has to win is the marketplace. The idea that an entrepreneur decides to uh, raise money from the general public on an on a, on a equity crowdfunding platform is what we need to promote, not that we're better than the competitors. We want our competitors to succeed too. We think everybody will succeed if equity crowdfunding it become, becomes, uh, grows every year. Um, we have a quite a significant market share today, which is very exciting. And we do publish uh, the regulation crowdfunding numbers every quarter. So you can see that on our blog. It's so exciting to see the growth of, of, a, of, of a marketplace. And we're part of it and we think with our competitors together, all of us united together, we can grow it because once we become mature, uh, competition matters when you mature in a mature market. But here we're still in the early stages of this business. Excellent gross margin improvements. Thank you. What is the plan to reinvest the additional gross profits? Well, right now uh, we're not profitable yet. Um, that is obviously a goal. So the gross profits are being spent with our operating costs. However, as you can see, the trend is in the, in the right direction. Uh, we hope that uh, we are built to continue to, to grow and improve. Uh, Ron asks, I'm assuming people costs is the largest expense driver followed by IT expenses. Is this correct? Will you publish the actual financials? So, uh, true, people is our largest cost. I agree. IT, um, that's a variable cost. Um, not the biggest cost, I would say. Uh, credit cards, someone mentioned it. Credit cards are very expensive. That's a big cost. Um, I would say people. And legal, believe it or not, our legal costs are tremendous. Um, and compliance, we, we have a whole uh, team called the review team that uh, looks at everything. So all these are costs, uh, significant costs. Chris asks, what is Start Engine's current headcount? We are under 40 people right now. Um, I don't know the exact headcount, but it's just under 40. Uh, Aaron asks, uh, reading the one dash essay, that's our six months report. I know that Start Engine has a subsidiary called Start Engine Assets LLC. Can you share how this subsidiary will contribute to Start Engine's future based on its business model of managing hard and soft assets? So absolutely, Start Engine Assets LLC is a sub, new subsidiary that we created. So what our plan is, is um, we haven't launched anything, but our plan is to offer to investors um, all other assets than just companies. So right now in Start Engine, you invest in companies. Um, but in the future, we're gonna offer things like real estate, uh, uh, royalties, music royalties, wine, uh, agriculture loans, uh, things like that. Uh, there, there's no real defined limit. I mean, you could do comic books or art for that matter. Uh, we will partner with amazing asset managers, people who really know what they're doing in this, in this world so that we can offer to our, our investors great opportunities. But again, we haven't announced any of them in specifics, but I just think it's important that you know the direction we're going. And the main reason we're doing that is because we believe that what Start Engine is in the end of the day as a platform is an alternative asset investment platform. What's alternative? Alternative to what? Well, the capital markets. Think about this. NASDAQ, New York Stock Exchange is called the capital markets. These are publicly traded stocks. Everything else 
which is about 90% of the value of America. So roughly, I mean, I don't have exact numbers to quote sources, but roughly let's say 10% of real estate is uh, traded in REITs. These are uh, investment trusts on the stock market. And 90% is not, 90% is not there. So the idea is that the alternative asset market is 90% of our country and it's unlocked. It's locked, it's locked, not unlocked. I mean locked, there's locked in private restricted securities. And as an alternative asset platform, we're offering an alternative to the stock market, which is NASDAQ, New York Stock Exchange, these kinds of platforms, right? But the alternative is 90% of the country, of the wealth of our country. So there is so much opportunity and room that for us to be called an alternative is kind of strange because really the private markets is the smallest part of, of the whole pie. But because it's popular and because it's available to consumers and it's very visible and transparent, it's considered the main market, right? They call it national market securities, right? And everything else is considered either restricted or private or exactly that. So that's why we're doing this. Joe asks, when do you expect starting to reach break even? Um, well, I would tell you that before COVID, we were not looking at being profitable any time in the short term, right? But things are going so good that I don't know, things may, we built to be profitable earlier. So the answer is we don't know when, and we can't say when, and it would not be fair to say when unless we had absolute demonstrable ability to say it, but we don't. So we won't say when, but we're in the right direction. You can see the numbers, just see them for yourself, the improvement. Uh, doesn't mean that the next six months, the ones by end of December is as tremendous or not. I mean, I don't know, we, we will see. Uh, I can tell you our team is working really hard uh, to continually improve our, 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 our market share, our numbers, everything is going in the right direction. But, you know, I think the COVID in a way demonstrates something that we all know, which is what some, a lot of things are, excuse me, a lot of things are unpredictable. So Kent asks, how do you determine your current pre-money valuation of 221? Seems pretty lofty considering your revenues around 10 million and break even profitability at best. Wow, so Kent is doing a lot of good analysis here. Um, you know, uh, valuation is a very, um, I would say, uh, difficult exercise because in reality, you look at companies like, for example, uh, Robinhood, for example, they're, it's an app, they have 12 million users, and they're considered $12 billion, okay? Um, I'm not sure if they're profitable or not. I don't have numbers. They don't report anything, but they just report the number of users they have. So they're varying each investor at uh, about roughly $1,000, right? Um, you could use that on us to determine our value. You could use exact same numbers. You could say it's worth $1,000 for each person. You could do that. Um, but our model is different than theirs. We, we actually earn commissions on issuing shares. They don't issue shares because they're trading only. And they are free, free trades, absolutely free. But we, we charge 5%, as you all know. Um, our growth rate matters. Um, so if we grow, for example, if you double your revenue over a year, that impacts the, the valuation. So all of that is impacting the valuation. So I think that telling you how we determine it is not something that we've published, but I can tell you that we look at it very carefully and we take responsibility for looking at it and making sure that um, when we make an offer that people understand, you know, they're, they're paying right now $13 per share. Um, we will always 
release our numbers as we did now for the six months. And then the next one will come out before the end of March. Um, and you can see for yourself. And, and, and hopefully there will be some uh, external people who are unrelated to Start Engine who will go through these financials and analyze it and make their own projections because we don't release any projections. And based on those projections, but don't forget, uh, people like Robin Hood at a $12 billion market cap um, don't release any numbers, but they do give projections to their investors. We don't. They do. So they have a, a, an advantage over us. John asks, what are some of the regulatory difficulties involved with Start Engine Secondary? Wow. I wish I could tell you the whole story. Maybe one day we can print it because I wish you could see the stuff we have to deal with. Um, you know, we just, we're innovators, we innovate. So in many ways, are we going on a faster pace than what the regulators are, are used to? Probably yes. Um, are regulators used to innovation? Absolutely they are. Um, they deal with it every day. Look at Robinhood as an example of a, an innovative company. So I can't tell you, you know, what the, the, the details are, but I can tell you that our team, including myself, are committed to getting these things resolved. And we do have approval for Start Engine Secondary, um, but even with the approval, we still have a lot of details to hash out and work working day in, day out to get it done. Um, Bryce asks, what are the revenues what were revenues and other key metrics, Q1 versus Q2? Um, you know, Q1 versus Q2, we did not give you those numbers. Um, so I can't, I can't comment on it. So just look at the numbers for the first half. And I think compare it to the previous year, first half. Uh, Jason asked, interested in the ramp up of the secondary marketplace, I see Star Engine will be the first uh, official listing that will actively trade. Wow. That would be exciting. What is the outlook for additional company listings? We have several companies who are interested in being on secondary. I can tell you that. We're actively talking to companies every day and we're actively promoting secondary to, to them. And our main pitch is this. Our main pitch is look, um, investors want liquidity. We know that. That's our number one question that we get from our investors. Investors want liquidity. Should you offer liquidity to investors, you probably will have a better outcome with your raise than if you didn't. We believe that. Um, we're gonna put our shares on secondary when, if and when we launch it. But, you know, what about other companies? You know, everybody doesn't wanna be the first. So guess we are the first. We want to be the first. We're excited to be the first. But it would be nice to have others, and we, I'm, I can tell you, others are interested. Um, but none have announced it yet, outside of ourselves. Rajiv asks, are there plans to build and promote customer success stories from companies that have raised money via Start Engine? We'd love to hear how the money raised helped them succeed. Wow, I think that's a great suggestion, Rajiv. Um, I hope marketing is listening. Um, I would love to have more case studies because I think at the end of the day, people love hearing great stories. Even if it didn't go well, they want to hear how it went. So I think this is a, a good suggestion. Um, okay. Harry asks, um, what is your revenue and margin guidance for 2020? I'm sorry, we give no guidance. Um, we don't plan to do any guidance. All right. Uh, Drew asks, when do you expect to be profitable if secondary market doesn't get approved right away? You know, I think that, you know, could we become profitable without the secondary market? I think it's possible, although we're spending money against it. Will we be profitable once the second market opens? I don't know. And the main reason is this. We need to invest heavily to market a new marketplace. So imagine this. 
Imagine you're, you're, one of you are launching a new marketplace to trade and there's no one there. How do you get over that kind of, you know, chicken and the egg problem where you need, you need, you need, you need sellers, but you need buyers to work with sellers, right? Buyers and sellers. And I think that is something our marketing group is, is working on and the marketing associated with that needs to be commensurate with our ambition to grow this into a successful marketplace. So would that mean not being profitable because we have to make those investments? That's possible. That is possible. It's absolutely possible. Um, and what, when do you get profitable at that point? I mean, yes, there's a point where your growth is so tremendous that you can become profitable because you, even if you invest heavily constantly, it's not sufficient. It, the investment is such that you still can have and drive off the profit. We're not going to go crazy here. This is not our job. Our job is not to go crazy and, and put at risk our success. So it's a balance between spending and not spending. And we have to make those difficult decisions every day. Okay, so Hillary asks, I may have missed this, but do you expect to be the future of Start Engine? And what do you expect to be the future of Start Engine 10, 20, 30 years? Well, we want a future for 10, 20, 30 years. We haven't built Start Engine as a company to be around just for a few years. We're not looking for like that quick exit, get rid of it, sell it. You know, that's not what we're here to do. We're here to build something significant, a significant brand in our country and eventually one day maybe internationally. So 10 years out, I told you what it is. By 2029, our aspiration is to raise $10 billion for companies by then. That's pretty successful. That's pretty amazing if you can imagine. Um, well, let's roll up our sleeves and get it done. That's what we have to do. It's just, you know, the talk is easy. It's easy for me to go and tell people, oh yeah, here's what we're going to do. And then we don't do it. Roll up the sleeves, get the job done. And I tell that to our team, look, it's going to be hard. It's, it's going to be a lot of hard work. It's going to be tough. We're going to have challenges. I mean, COVID, who knew, right? And we're just going to get it done. That's what we have to do. Uh, Kent says the space is already very competitive. What competitive advantage does Star Engine have versus competition? Well, I don't agree it's competitive. And, and the main reason I said it before, it's not competitive because how much are we, how much is the entire industry raising for companies right now? We're talking about hundreds of millions, maybe a billion. And the VCs, they invest 150 billion a year. So, I mean, obviously we have to be able to compete against them. Two, 150 billion. And I think our entire industry is maybe billion something, whatever, still very small. Our competition is the lack of knowledge and understanding or the, or, or the hesitation among entrepreneurs in our country to take advantage of this. You know, I talk to customers every day, all the time. I talk to customers and I try to understand what their interests are, their concerns. And I, I tell you, a lot of them don't know about this or don't understand it and they're hesitating. What we have to do is have all of you on this call, all of you, uh, tell your friends who are entrepreneurs to come on Start Engine and raise capital and then tell their friends and their friends. And this uh, grassroots movement will help in a very natural way bring success to all the platforms, including us. Tom asks, can you share the demographics of supply demand? Uh, what is the volume of listing companies and of investors? What is the rate of increase in LTM? Do you have an outlook for the, for the next year? Again, we, we don't um, make any forecasts. We won't share any forecasts. We do it internally. Of course we do it. We have budgets, right? Uh, the demographics of supply and demand. Well, obviously we need companies to be on Start Engine to raise capital so that they can go on secondary. So here's our plan. It's very simple. 
bring a company to raise money using regulation crowdfunding, which is the $1 million rule. Get them to a million dollars. Then bring them back to do a regulation A offering, which is multi-million dollars, right? It could be two million, five million, 10 million, or like Nightscope, 24 million, almost, okay? And then secondary. Put those shares in secondary so those investors can trade. And then if the company needs further capital, do another regulation A offering where they sell shares into the marketplace, even though it trades. And we haven't announced, but we're going to announce a, a method that we've come up with that will make it work so that even if a company's shares are trading on the secondary marketplace, they can still raise capital. And that innovation is ours. And we're excited to share it with you once we announce it. Uh, Satish asks, as an investor, I like, I would like the company to be open to offer discounts if I choose to raise money using Start Engine as a platform. That's really interesting. So an owner, an owner investor in Start Engine gets a discount for raising money for their company. Great idea. Let's figure out something. I'll talk to marketing about it. And why not? If you invest in Start Engine and you're an owner, should, let's give you something special, right? Um, and then he says, I'll be excited if we're given an opportunity to be brand ambassadors of Start Engine and return benefit with stock and options. Wow. Um, we have a brand ambassador program um, for, for all of you. Uh, we pay a thousand dollars if we sign a company to go on Start Engine. So please send your companies, participate in the program. Uh, that information is available on our website. It's called Scout, it's a Scout program. Uh, but uh, I'm, we're gonna take your, your suggestions in, 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 in consideration and, and figure out something, hopefully if we can. Uh, again, we have to also follow a lot of regulatory stuff. So it's, that's why it's never black and white. Um, uh, an attendee is asking, would it be fair to say that a good deal of the expenses for the first half was related to R&D? Um, um, I think a good number is, but it's not the biggest number. I think the biggest number would be uh, sales and marketing and advertising. But yes, R&D is a good number too. It's a, it's a good percentage. So um, we don't break it down. Um, Kirk asks, what is your annual earnings projections upon reaching 1 billion per year raised? Wow. Annual earnings. Well, we, I, I, you can do the math. I'll tell you what, Kirk, you could be an analyst. Take a billion raised and multiply it by 7%, which is the fee we charge. And then evaluate how many of those companies will go on secondary. And then we can get trading revenue from that as well. Also, we get 2% in stock, but we don't know what that's worth from that $1 billion raised. So there'll be an additional $200 million of stock the, uh, the, no, no, billion raise us, that, that would be 7% would be uh, 70 million. And then there's about another 20 million of stock coming in. But we don't know that's worth because it's, you know, again, not on the secondary. But once it goes to secondary and it trades, and if it trades, well, then we know the value. So I'll let you do the math. Go figure out what it means once we raise a billion. Uh, Brad says, I've encouraged many technical, I've encountered many technical issues with the Start Engine services, including not being able to register a corporate entity and not receiving Start Engine bonus shares. What plans do you have to improve the quality of services? Wow. Well, Brad, I, I'm not happy hearing that. Um, I'd like you to reach out to contact at Start Engine and really, if there's anything we've done wrong, fix it. Um, and how do we improve it? Well, we need to hire more people. We need to improve our, our methods and we just have to do better. And we make mistakes and we need to fix them. And we need to look 
at the mistakes and look at, but in the end of the day, look at our values. Our values is to do the right thing. That's one of our values. And um, especially for you as, a, as an investor, if we have not um, done it right, we, we need to fix it. John asks, why would start engine think of, why would start engine think of paying bonuses to employees or executives if you're not profitable yet? Why do we pay bonuses? Ah, okay, that's a good question. Why do we pay bonuses? Okay, well, I would think you would agree that in order to be successful, we need amazing people working here at Start Engine, right? You don't want people who are uh, not, you, you, you want people who are motivated, uh, who have ambition and want to work here and, 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 and they can contribute. Well, in order to do that, you have to compensate. Uh, it's a competitive market out there for great talent. So paying bonuses to salespeople, their base is not that high. They don't make a lot of money. I mean, you know, they don't make a lot if they don't sell. Now, if they don't sell, they don't stay here, obviously. But um, the talented salespeople, you, you would agree with me, you want to pay them a bonus uh, uh, if they can sell. And if we start generating a lot of revenue, you have to pay bonuses and our, our management team too. So it's not unusual for companies, even though they're not profitable yet to pay bonuses. Now, um, should you pay bigger bonuses if you're profitable? Yeah, we could look at that um, as well. Um, but the profits belong to the shareholders too. So it's a balance. Um, so what we intend to do is be competitive in the marketplace on talent so we can retain and continue to bring in talent. And that's very important. Um, let's see, we have two minutes left. Um, I'll take one or two more questions. Thank you for all your questions, by the way. And there's more than I can answer. Uh, uh, there's a dear Howard, your revenue trajectory and the GM is excellent. Gross margin, I guess, GM. Congratulations to you and the team. Can you help understand to see the growth of your 2029 vision? What is the roadmap? How do we get there, right? Uh, outside of secondary. Outside, how do you get there outside of secondary? How many companies are, you clo are closing their raise every six months? And what do we expect to see in the next few years? Again, we don't do projections. Um, you know, I think secondary is really important, guys. It's really important because I think that can you, can we build a company that has humongous amount of revenue and profitability without offering our investors liquidity? Um, I'm not sure about that. I think I, I'm more convinced that if we have secondary as a successful platform and we offer liquidity, I'm more convinced that we will be able to uh, uh, reach our, our goals, right? Mm -hmm. Our aspiration goals. Way more convinced, by the way, than if we just, um, just issuing shares, then those are illiquid and they can't be traded and you have to wait for the company to go public or get sold. It's, it's just not enough, in my opinion. I think as a company, we need to innovate. We have to continue to innovate. And one of the big innovations is the most important uh, question we ask from we have from all our investors is how can I sell my stock and we need to solve this and we're committed to that so thank you everyone I really 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 appreciate you attending uh, we had a lot of people here today um, I look forward to um, more of these zooms um, I, I, I was very happy to be able to do it today so please don't hesitate to be our brand ambassadors um, and help continue, help our company become successful. Thank you to all of you.